Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we are heading back into the Nether, and we are going to take another look at the Nether Harbour. This is kind of an ongoing project. We haven't been here for a little while, at least not since we built the compass, and we took a look at spawn proofing this place. Since then we have had a few occasions when pigmen and stuff have been able to spawn and drop down here and right now I'm pretty sure all of them including this skeleton right here because that's in the bounding box of a nether fortress are coming from these lines of prismarine. I really want to take these out so that I can have a slightly more pleasant experience navigating the nether hub and do a little bit more work on it. The next step is to get the glass floor in here but really what I want to do before that is work on the dioramas I said I was going to build around the outside. We're going to be doing a bunch of dioramas of individual Minecraft biomes around the outside of here. And is this, this isn't a flat floor, right? Yeah, okay, that's still a half block. That's still a half block that's got carpet on it. Okay, I was a little bit confused there, but it's fine. So what I want to do around the outside here is a set of dioramas representing different Minecraft biomes. The problem with that, of course, is that some Minecraft biomes can only really be represented by full blocks. Or can they? That's the type of thing we're going to be looking at today. We're going to try our best to come up with a few different ways that we can avoid creating spawnable areas inside here for zombie pigmen. Because while it's not the most terrible thing in the world to have the zombie pigmen roaming around inside of here, I would prefer that they didn't. I kind of like the idea of it being a nice kind of closed off environment that is unable to spawn anything extra. So for now, we're going to return to the overworld. We're going to grab some materials. We're going to take a look at what materials we will need to create some spawn proof dioramas of biomes from the overworld. So as we know, it's going to be best to spawn proof stuff with blocks which are not full blocks or don't have at least a top half surface that zombie pigmen could potentially spawn on. So we're going to be looking at making stuff out of slabs. We're going to be using trapdoors and things like that. Buttons, maybe if we want to have those covering a surface, although making a natural scene using a bunch of buttons everywhere would kind of be a bit of a pain. We could potentially use some other things though and... I'm thinking maybe carpets might play quite a, a large role here, considering that we want to be able to use tones of brown and green to represent overworld biomes that will have grass, but we don't want to be able to use grass blocks because that would just have a spawnable space for pigmen and you can't make grass slabs or anything like that. So we are probably going to be working with a fair amount of wool here. Luckily, I do have this automatic sheep farm and I haven't used a great deal of the green wool from here. So we should be able to, yeah, make a bunch of carpet out of this, which is going to be able to cover up any other blocks that we want to use. And we could even use grass blocks just to get the grass kind of covering on the outside if we wanted that to look a little bit more realistic and then set down some green carpet on top. It's a bit of an aesthetic compromise, but there really isn't many other ways that we could do this and get away with it. And to be honest, from a distance in the nether hub, it's not really going to look all that different. Bear in mind, of course, that the grass in the nether hub is going to be a different color because the nether is a hot biome. So potentially there could be a bit more contrast there. But likewise, we can use uh, brown wool carpets in place of dirt, and those will probably blend a little bit better with the dirt texture. And we've got a bunch of other materials that we can work with as well. Those are for the grassier biomes, the plains and that kind of stuff. Then, of course, we get into something like a desert. And while the desert is mainly going to be sand, of course, that can be easily represented by sandstone slabs. The texture of smooth sandstone can look quite similar to sand, especially from the distance that we'll be looking at it. I think we might go for something with prismarine representing the ocean, because, of course, we can't have water in the nether. The only other thing we could maybe compromise with would be blue glass. So maybe a couple of layers of blue glass wouldn't go too badly. Uh, some blue stained glass, maybe some cyan even mixed in. And and then some prismarine underneath that or some gravel or something like that wouldn't be too bad. We could work with glass actually layering it over the top of some of the landscaped biomes if we really didn't want to compromise on using the uh, grass blocks and stuff like that. But that might present a bit of a problem if we want to have like a rolling hill or something like that because then the glass is going to be a lot more obvious if it's got lots of edges and stuff like that. But we will potentially end up using some clear glass or maybe even some white glass to represent clouds could be a good idea too. I'm saving a lot of the clear glass for the actual floor of the nether hub though, so that's going to be a different discussion really. We could always end up using some natural stone slabs because of course those being in the game allows us a lot more 
uh, stuff that we can do with the uh, the stone texture in the game, and and that will still allow you to have the illusion of a full stone block that is actually a half block, preventing mobs from spawning there. And there are a few other things we could do. We could even put in maybe representations of a jungle temple if we built a jungle biome or something like that. It could add a little bit of variation to it, and that would allow us to use lots of leaves and stuff for the jungle floor that could also prevent pigmen from spawning. So we do have quite a lot of options here. My main concern is dividing up the outside of the nether hub with a bunch of dividers which are going to have even spacing around the outside. And that's going to be the hardest part, I think, because... Yeah, that's a large circle, and dividing that up between lots of different biomes is going to be quite difficult. And in the end, I've narrowed it down to about 12 biomes I think we're going to be using, which is going to be difficult to divide between, but I think we should be able to manage it. We've got Plains, Swamp, Mega Tiger, Dark Oak Forest, Jungle, Snow Plains, Mushroom Island, Ocean, Desert, Savanna, Badlands, and the End. I kind of want the End represented here because, of course, it's one of the locations that you can travel to quite easily from our nether hub. <laughs> so, this is going to be a bit of a project. I really do think it's going to take a fair bit of doing. But I, would, I did want to avoid certain types of biomes. For example, building stuff like mountains, they're really characterized by their height, and we don't really have a lot of height to work with in the nether hub because the floor that we're going to be walking on is not that much higher than the floor that the stuff is going to be built on. So we'll give mountains a miss. We'll probably work stuff like that into the plains a little bit, or maybe the mega tiger can look a little bit more mountainous, that kind of thing. We can have some mossy cobble and some natural stone around just to give it that kind of flavor. But we're just going to be working with a bunch of the different wood types, really. It's not going to be too bad. We're, we're going to put some trees here and there in the plains section. So I'm going to head over to the nether again. I'm going to try and work out exactly how to divide this circle into 12 individual slices. And then we'll come back and we'll do some building. So having given it a bit of thought, I've decided to make a bit of a change to the plan and do 16 different biome dioramas instead of 12. And while that sounds like more work for myself, it's actually kind of less work for myself, mathematically speaking, because all I had to do was extend each one of these compass points, because between the, uh, say, the southern compass point here and the a western one or is that the eastern one that's the eastern one over there we have three other compass points making it four per side and all you need to do is expand any of these directions and you get 16 different individual sections here so i figure we would try out one of them over here we're going to start with probably the plains biome but i've added four more biomes to my list which are a forest i thought i was just going to do oak uh, trees on the plains but i figured i might do an actual forest biome as well a birch forest, because there are those in the world, they do exist, all birch trees. Uh, we've got nether, because, I mean, we didn't really include the nether in the original plan because we're surrounded by it, but once we have this nether hub all finished up, we're not really going to be able to tell all that much that we're in the nether, because we're going to take the ceiling out as well. And a river biome also kind of made sense, because rivers are quite a common feature. So... I'm going to start putting the grass in here, and as you can already see, it is a little bit of a different colour from the wool here. More so than really it seems in the overworld. So we are probably going to have to deal with that a little bit, or alternatively, use green wool the whole way around and make it look a little bit more nice like that. It kind of makes it look like the... The whole thing wraps around. We're going to have to put carpets on top of these as well, so I'll make a few more carpets. But it kind of looks like the better grass texture that you get in Optifine, where the grass actually covers the sides of blocks as well as the top. So I kind of I kind of feel like I like that better. It's going to mean, obviously, using more wool, uh, but I got plenty of it right now thanks to the auto sheep farm, and I really do think it's going to look a little bit nicer this way. And I'm picking the positions of these pretty arbitrarily. I'm just kind of deciding which one I want to build where, and I'll probably build them in sort of an order so they correspond a little bit like the hot biomes are next to each other in terms of like the jungle being next to the mesa or badlands biome that kind of thing and i'm gonna do them going sort of around in a circle maybe have an ocean you know a representation of an ocean biome at least separating one or two of them and then looping back around to the uh, the cold biomes on the opposite side and we're not really going to have them tied to a specific location in the nether hub originally i thought yeah that'd be a great idea i could do like an, a mushroom island in the direction of the mushroom island that i that i've scouted out but really i don't think it really makes all that much sense to do that because there are planes everywhere like where would the nether and the end go there's not really going to be a great deal of logic to placing them in any of these areas in particular so i, I feel like i can just 
be a little bit more kind of random with it. I, I will pick locations that I want to build stuff and I will build stuff there. As long as it makes some sort of sense, you're going to be able to find any biome in basically every direction you travel if you travel far enough. Thinking about it, we don't actually have to use wool blocks for the back section here. I'm using them now because I've got loads of them, but we could just fill the rest of this in with grass blocks or dirt or something and nobody would really know the difference because once we get past these sections, you're not really going to be able to see any of the block behind the bit that we're looking at here and we need to start putting some trees in now the problem with this of course is that once we get up to a certain height we're really not going to have that much room to work with so i think we'll probably start a tree there and there'll be slightly more kind of cartoony representations of trees they might be something a little bit more like this which is going to be yeah a little bit of a, a small tree for our plains biome here but from above it's going to look a little bit cute and cartoony and you'll get the general idea right this is meant to be a plains biome it's also kind of a shame that the oak leaves don't look all that great in the nether but once again we could use birch leaves instead and while they wouldn't be accurate for the type of tree they don't change their color in any of the different biomes so if we go and grab some birch leaves we might actually have some nicer greener looking leaves there you know what, yeah, with birch leaves that really does look a lot better, doesn't it? I like that a lot. We can uh, maybe make a couple more of these as we go, but I also want to start a kind of rolling hill effect here as well. So we can maybe bring that out a couple of blocks here and there. Looking at it from a distance like this, it's really not that obvious that that isn't grass. It's really quite cool. So we can make a few biome dioramas like this around the outside here. We can finish this one off maybe with another tree or two and perhaps a little bit of stone in the background not just uh, for the wall back here but also for a couple of like larger hills and hillsides because plains aren't entirely like rolling fields of grass you get some stone and and little kind of landscape formations mixed in there as well and that can look pretty good so this is the south facing area we can do maybe a forest next to that and then we can kind of proceed around into the colder biomes and the warmer biomes and stuff like that Perfect. Yeah, no, I think this is going to work out super well. It occurs to me that we could even use some features like farmland, which is not a full block and cannot really be spawned upon. And uh, let's throw that sandstone slab out there. We can potentially use stuff like that or maybe even grass path, actually, to give it a little bit more of a plains flavor and make it look like the the biome has almost been lived in a little bit and that will lend a little bit more realism to it i think so yeah potentially we could do some stuff like that use farmland and and grass path maybe a few i, I brought some cobblestone wall and some stone slabs and mossy stone slabs that we can potentially use there as well let's let's see how some of that looks and this now might be one of the cutest things I've ever built. I actually really like the way the wool looks, which is not something I thought I would say. I was a little bit worried that the wool was going to look too artificial the entire time, but I think having a bit of farmland in there with the wheat slowly growing, some of it grown artificially with bone meal, but the rest of it slowly growing up is actually making this really, really great. So I've hidden a bit of lighting, as you can see, a couple of smoke particles drifting up from some of these carpets. There's a couple of torches under there. Of course, we could replace those with jack-o'-lanterns or sea lanterns or glowstone or anything like that if we didn't want those particles, but I'm not that worried about those. And in the meantime, I have covered every possible square inch I can with carpet just to make sure that we don't end up with any unwanted mob spawns. I have left them off the top layer here and left a couple of blocks flat along the top because this is where we're going to start putting in the glass. And I don't know for certain if I want to go with clear glass, especially because we have this streaky texture to it so i might go away and make some of this into light gray which is going to have a much more subtle streak to it we'll end up tinting some of the stuff in here an unwanted color but i think that's only to be expected and if it's the nether it's going to look a little bit smoky that's probably fine anyway so yeah i reckon we'll go away and make some uh, light gray glass and we'll cover this whole thing over of course, if we wanted to, considering that there are 16 segments here and 16 colors in Minecraft, we could always end up color coding some of these segments a little bit. So having this be a lighter green or something and then moving around the circle so that the Mushroom Island one was magenta, the Nether one was red, for example. We could do all kinds of stuff like that. I'm not going to go quite so rainbow happy in the, uh, in the Nether, but uh, it's always a possibility that we could dye the different colors of glass in future. And you could go as colorful as you like with your own Nether hub. That would be a really really cool thing to see but i think we can probably manage to get a few more of these little biome dioramas done today i'm not going to say we'll finish all 16 because that's a heck of a job for a single video but in the meantime i reckon we can get some of that stuff done so how about we do it in the form of a time lapse
Welcome back folks, I hope you enjoyed the time lapse. These biomes came together really well. Aside from this little one over here which is kind of representing the plains, we have a forest complete with a lovely little lake which you can kind of see through to the nether floor below but I might be able to do something about that later. A campfire or two with a couple of chopped logs where these were getting slightly too close to the glass ceiling that we've got here but a plentiful supply of a mix of oak and birch trees and where the mix comes in I think it's really nice to include some of the nether colored oak leaves just kind of give it almost like an autumnal vibe to it helped by the campfires I suppose moving over here into the all birch forest I thought it'd be nice to have a ravine feature in here as well so I might once again fill in the bottom of that with stone or something like that or additional layers of glass but I do like the fact that we can use the fog effect a little bit there and then moving on at last to our newest addition, the Spruce Tiger Biome. This is what one that's modelled more after a Mega Tiger, hence the additional brown carpet to represent a bit more podzol. Some actual podzol that we can grow berry bushes on, and the berry bushes have actually grown with some success while they're here. I don't know if they need light to grow, so that might be why that one there is having an easier time growing than some of these others that are further out. I might try and hide some more light sources under here and under the birch forest as well because that one is a little bit dark right now. But I like the fact that we can play around with light a little bit here and the carpet is preventing mob spawns entirely so we don't need to worry too much about that. All in all, I'm really happy with the effect we have achieved here. But these are just four out of 16 biomes I plan to build out here. Unfortunately, I'm running out of time for today, so I won't be able to do any more in this episode. But it's going to be a nice ongoing project, and I will fill you guys in as this little section of the Nether Hub continues. I kind of want to do a little bit more with the outside of the compass now. These areas are feeling just a little bit too barren for me, so maybe I want to put in some other stuff, maybe some ornamentation around the circle around the outside, or maybe some kind of inner inset inlay detail kind of thing in between some of these sections, maybe. I don't know. I'm not entirely certain. I, I will also have to do a lot more clearing out of the nether rack from over here. So if I kind of hop up onto this next section of the, if I can actually activate my elytra, there we go. If I hop up here and start to mine out this level and move downwards, then I'll be able to expose the nether hub from above and it's really going to look like something special once the whole thing is filled in with biome dioramas. But that is going to be all we're going to do for today's episode, folks. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.